Hey guys, Nick Espinosa, your Chief Security Fanatic here, and welcome to more daily news. Now, I'm going to bring you up to date on the latest goings on of the Equifax data breach from last year. Now, the House uh, Government Committee for Oversight and Government Reform compiled a, or rather did a, performed a 14-month uh, analysis of the uh, situation. They investigated it and they just released their report. And so I'm going to be quoting from that a bit here um, from house.gov. This is straight from the government's findings. And quite frankly, they're all over the map. Now, if you recall, just as a quick synopsis, back in 2017, Equifax had a major data breach. They hold a ton of sensitive information on pretty much every man, woman, and child in the United States and well beyond living and dead, because obviously dead people used to have credit scores as well. And they got hit and declared a breach of 142 million records being dumped. I immediately went out on social media and publicly said, that is a complete lie. We're going to see that number continue to raise. And we have. They've raised it by, I want to say, another 20 to 50 million or so since then. And I think it will continue to go up. Um, you know, but I also said that you know they should be put out of business by virtue of this. So full disclosure here, I'm obviously not a fan of Equifax and, and what happened with their breach. So... I'm going to now talk to you guys about what the government has found, and quite frankly, it underscores a lot of what we already knew. The first point that the government made was that this entire thing was entirely preventable. And I quote, Equifax failed to fully appreciate and mitigate its cybersecurity risks. Had the company taken action to address its observable security issues, the data breach could have been prevented. Now, Equifax came out and basically said, uh, speaking directly to this point when the breach happened is that they had discovered that the issue was Apache Struts. Now, Struts is the product they were using from Apache for web hosting, and they had not updated or patched this. Uh, and by virtue of that, they left a security vulnerability that a hacker was able to work around. They could have prevented this simply by patching. The next point that the government makes is a lack of accountability and management structure. Equifax failed to implement clear lines of authority within their internal IT management structure, leading to an executive gap between IT policy development and operation. Ultimately, the gap restricted the company's ability to implement security initiatives in a comprehensive and timely manner. Now, what this means is exactly what Equifax pointed the finger at publicly. Basically, when it was determined that they had failed to update Apache Struts, they, they had said, well, there's one employee that was designated to do that and he didn't do that and I believe he was on vacation or out sick or something along those lines and that's basically what what um, Equifax was saying now Apache struts had been left uh, unpatched for months uh, if I recall because the breach had happened in March and it got disclosed months later so we're gonna see where that goes but that is the finding of the government the third one is complex and outdated IT systems. Equifax's aggressive growth strategy and accumulation of data resulted in a complex IT environment. Both the complexity and antiquated nature of Equifax's custom-built legacy systems made IT security especially challenging. And this is actually true of a lot of large companies that are continuing to grow, whether it's organically by hiring or through acquisition of other companies. What ends up happening is you end up Frankensteining in a whole bunch of different technologies that are supposed to be running various aspects of the business. So if Equifax bought, let's say, a smaller competitor or something along those lines, they may have integrated um, the technology, the database, and the information, but it wasn't a full merge into a single streamlined system. This is a problem we see industry-wide, IT-wide. Equifax is definitely not alone in this, but that obviously contributed to opening up gaps in the cyber defense system, how they isolate, how they defend that data, uh, how that data is moving through the system, and can it be captured through things like a man-in-the-middle attack? We're not necessarily sure because obviously we don't know all of Equifax's back-end infrastructure, but I see this kind of thing all the time. Moving on, the next point that the government, government makes is failure to implement responsible security measures. Equifax allowed over 300 security certificates to expire, including 79 certificates for monitoring business critical domains. Failure to renew an expired digital certificate for 19 months left Equifax without visibility on the exfiltration of data during the time of a cyber attack. And this is actually 
a really interesting point because we use certificates, um, one, to validate the websites, but two, to ensure that we have SSL or TLS encryption running uh, as we are moving data back and forth. And if they don't have proper security certificates, they might not have been able to plug into their systems and monitor fully. And that is a serious, serious failure. I've, I've worked with some seriously large corporations over the past. I've never seen one that had 300 security certificates expire uh, at any one time. And I think that also speaks to a severe lack of oversight, which was their which was their um, second point, lack of accountability and management structure. That is just unconscionable to me. And finally, the last point that they make, and this is a synopsis of their full report, um, is unprepared to support affected customers. After Equifax informed the public of the data breach, they were unprepared to identify, alert, and support affected customers. The breach website and call centers were immediately overwhelmed, resulting in effective affected consumers being unable to access information necessary to protect their identity. Yes, I don't think Equifax necessarily understood the scope of what we were talking about here, that that their, their data breach would essentially be a bomb going off um, in the media, and the media covered it pretty religiously for, I want to say, weeks at this point, which, quite frankly, was actually gratifying for me to see because, as you know, I do data breaches of the week, and we see data breaches all the time, not usually this big, some significantly bigger in terms of record count, but in terms of intimate data, uh, I'm really glad this got a lot of media attention. Now, that said, <clears throat> as soon as they're going to declare a breach, there's an entire process for breach declaration. One of those things is preparing to go public with this, understanding that you're going to get an onslaught of consumers. And if you're affecting 142 million, the expectation is that overwhelmingly you're going to be contacted by you know, 70 million, 80 million, 90 million, if not more. And that's exactly what happened. And like, as I said, I think overall, and this is my prediction, um, I'm not part of Equifax's, you know, breach response. I, I don't know their internals, but if I have to make a prediction on this, I think over the years, we're going to see this Equifax number raised from its original 142 million, which was a lie, to probably 500 million to a billion. Because as I said, every man, woman, and child with any kind of credit score, history, identification, social security number, et cetera, in the United States, States living and dead. So my dead father, for example, has an Equifax score and he has for years until he died a couple years ago, is going to be, you know, in this in this realm. You know, and so this is a problem that we're going to see the fallout of from years, but I'm glad to see that the government is able to sum this up. Now, in terms of sanctions, this report has recommendations on how Equifax can improve, but what I'm looking for is massive fines, whether it's from Europe's GDPR, although this happened before GDPR, we're going to see if there's some kind of retroactive clause that they might be running, or fines and sanctions from the U.S. government as well. So we'll see where this goes, but that is your update on Equifax, and quite frankly, it's... It's it's good to see all of this stuff, but it's absolutely shocking to see just how mismanaged they were. 300 certificates alone. I mean, um, uh, an IT infrastructure with no top-down level management is, or rather gaps in the top-down level management is a serious, serious problem. So hopefully Equifax is going to straighten up or hopefully they're going to go out of business. Either way, you can tell I'm not a fan. So that is your more news of the day. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter. And thank you for watching my new YouTube channel slash Nick Espinoza. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.